too. You know, I mean, they slept over there. So, uh, so we're all real good friends. And the answer to your question is yeah. Uh, what what I did was uh, uh, Bob Croom was sent this record. He sent a, an acetate, which is the way they used to release these singles. Mm -hmm. And you would test it by giving it to a disc jockey or radio station. They would play it for a while. And you can only get so many plays out of it because it was pressed in, in the, in the uh, mixing hall, you know, in the Bell Sound. So you, it was not a pressing, it was a, a, what they call an acetate. It was a temporary. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can maybe get 100 plays out of it. So I had a couple of them. And I played them for four hours until they wore out and I got fired too. Incidentally, they're kicking the ass on the way out the door because I stirred up everybody, you know, plus the management woke up and they heard what I was doing and everybody was crazy. So, but I knew it was a hit record. I just knew it. You know, it's one of those things where it was so different than everything else. And I, and I, I played it and I made a deal out of it, you know, and I kept going over and over. And in those days we smoked, you know, we smoked cigarettes right. in the station. Boy, I must have gone through two packs that night. That's what I was getting at. And I was, and I, and I'm playing this thing and I was really loving it. I was playing two at once. You know, I got two turntables going at the same time, and you get what they what they would call uh, one sound canceling out the other, mm -hmm. and it would give a real weird effect. Like uh, there there was a hit record called Telstar that had that uh, that little effect in it. That you know, and if you play two records at once on the same two turntables at once and turn the controls up, you could get that effect. So I did that with Sherry, and it was it was like Sherry, Sherry, you know, so, so really were people, weird. Were people calling you and kept calling you and saying, "What are you doing? Oh, yeah, Your record's were, Oh stuck? yeah, they called the cops. I was going to say, like, did the guy pass out over there? Well, they, no, no, no. They knew that I was just I was gaming them, and they right. they were getting mad because people don't don't watch this screw on at their radio station. So, so will you, you know? play my Sherry from Jersey Babies for yeah, hours and hours? <laughs> well, you can't do that anymore because it's not a big it's not a big deal. But you know, okay, know, but when it was when it, when it was shock, you know, I mean, back in those days, it was shock. Well, you can turn it into a big deal. You see, you have that magic touch, right? Yeah. Well, I'm not, I don't want to get fired now. This <laughs> is a bad time to be out of work. <laughs> I agree. I just thought I'd beg a little. What kind of work do you, you do? You know, well, I actually used to be a buyer for Fortune Off for ten years. Oh, good for you. Good, for you. good store. Good store. It's a great store, yeah. right? And they're selling my CD. Where were we on on uh, Route Forty and? No, I was actually in Long Island in the uh, corporate office I see. In, in Westbury. Um, but anyhow, I worked there for 10 years, and two years ago I left my job because I have two young boys. Yeah. Um, I got my patio furniture at Fortune You did? And ago. I hope it's still staying together, uh, right? I think the wedding's gone, and the, the, I mean, the wedding's off. <laughs> So I I I um I ended up leaving my job because I need to be home for my kids. Yeah. And so now I am a stay-at-home mom, and I just it was able to get involved in this CD and really push and persist and bug my dad till he did it for me. Now your father's uh, uh, one of the owners of Jersey Boys. Um, I. He's one of the producers. Well, I I wouldn't say he's one of the owners though because he is more. Um, like involved in the choices that they make as far as who who's the next new Frankie, you know, he yeah. goes to all the so, auditions well, he's one make of, sure all the sound And so he's one good. of the producers. He's one of the one of the big shots in it. Yeah, I guess he is. Yeah. He's I, mean, not on a, I would say I was gonna I was gonna give him a little compliment here and uh, you know, he made that thing happen. So yeah, for, for the yeah, quiet guy Frankie, that he is, yes. I mean he made it happen. Yeah. He and Frankie both, I think. Yeah, I know, mean, he stuck with it, and he and he, and he drove this thing home until yeah. it, until it became. And he's, it's a phenom. It's a phenom. It is, and he, I have to say, he is working very hard. So there you go. You know, so for the quietest guy in the in the group, he There's certainly. There's a lot of thinking, right? Uh, he must have had a lot of plans that he didn't tell us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, was thinking, he was thinking a lot. <laughs> So it's to his credit, you know, he stayed with it and he got it going. And I think he's organized uh, pretty well. He, he stopped performing and decided that he was going to be running the business. Yeah. That's what I think. Unless I don't have this right. Is that, is that no, correct? No, he is. He's, yeah. he, you know, him and Frankie are still partners. Yeah, and he, all these but he runs and the publishing and everything else that they, yeah. they've kept their hands in. And he's yeah. been a good businessman. I was just he's giving Bobby him a compliment. Bobby the business But right? giving, I'm giving him a compliment, yes. you know what I mean? So he always was a suit. Yeah, That's why we hated him. <laughs> 
he was the suit. See, he was in. He was. He was infiltrated the group. He came in as a talent, but he really was the suit. Right, right, right. Disguise. <laughs> the man in disguise, <laughs> Clark Kent. <laughs> yeah. But what what a, what a great show! You know, when you when you work with these guys uh, and you see, I mean, in the earlier days when there were just four of them and they were just playing their own instruments, you know, it was a, a little different ride than now with all the electronics and the effects and this and that. Uh, you know, I mean, there's just four guys playing. It was it was really easy. The Beatles could get away with it easily because no one ever heard them. Mm -hmm. You know, there was so much crowd noise from screaming that they didn't have to play well at all. Nobody knew if they sang well. We right, never, right. Nobody heard them. Well, <laughs> Out of the studio, you never heard them. <laughs> but they made good records. Yeah. Four Seasons made, uh, made so many different uh, live performances that were good. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they were good in person, too. Did you know that? I did know that. They yeah. were. They're still good in yeah. person, actually. Well, they're not together. Well, not the originals, but did you see Frankie on NBC yesterday? No. Two hours. Yeah. He was on NBC for the. They had a tribute on ice to Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons, and he performed for two hours while the ice skaters were ice skating, and it was really pretty incredible. Where was it? It was in Chicago. Yeah. So what was it about? What was the bit? Um, well, it was an ice skating tribute, and they had. I'm sorry, it was an ice skating tribute, and they had the ice skater skating to all the Four Seasons songs. Yeah, and Frankie sang live? Frankie sang live, and um, I mean, it really, you know, those things sometimes are difficult to sound, have everything together in a big arena like that, and, you know, with the ice, and um, it was it was really, really neat. I was over at Martin Cadillac today in, in New Jersey, you know, with Tim Martin, mm -hmm. and he said to me, uh, I was surprised that you weren't with uh, Frankie Valley on ice. I didn't know what he meant by that. Now you know, right? Now I know. Now I was wondering know. what the hell he's talking about. I was over at Marilyn May at the Metropolitan Cafe last night. Uh -huh. Can't be everywhere anyway. And I wasn't in Chicago. Right. And, I, and I wasn't invited. You know, I'm not invited. See, they they really don't. I mean, but people, I, you know, I'm, I'm friends with Les Paul. And I love Les Paul. But he, people, when they hear someone's name, they think you're with them all the time. You know, right. I mean, right. I don't live with them. Right, right. <laughs> you, know? uh, you, you, just, you just happen to be fans and you do what you got to do with them. I mean, Ernie Anastas called me today, you know Ernie? Mm -hmm. And I said, what are you calling me today for? you got to worry about the elections. And, you know, he's not doesn't even have his mind on the elections because it's it's a lot of work tomorrow. But he doesn't have to do that yet, see? Right. So I, I'm thinking, you know, the guy's going to sit there and doesn't have a chance to talk to anybody because he's getting all ready for this. That's what we think. You know, you got that in your head. And, and it's it, it doesn't go that way. I mean, it's all uh, a very different inside job than it is outside. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's fun, isn't it? It's fun. I mean, it's, a, it's 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 a great ride. Yeah, it is, and and you know, I think the show. What's what's great about the show is it's a, it's a feel good show. And you I mean Jersey Boys? Jersey Boys. Oh well, Jersey Boys is that's a home run. You don't even talk about that one. How'd you make yeah. out with the movie you were working on? Good, good. They called me Joey Brando this week. Yeah. Yeah. You were talking about that. You came out to do our our big Union New Jersey bicentennial, and right. And you had to go back and finish the movie? Yeah, and I went to Nevada, yeah. and I did all the outside stuff last week. What, what part do you play in that? Well, there, it's, I play the, one of the leads. There's a wilderness camp, and the kid named Aaron Bacon who dies from anorexia and being tortured by this uh, uh, system of tough love. And I'm the director of the, of the camp, so I'm the villain in the play. But I come off like a very nice guy, you know. Meanwhile, we're killing kids with tough love, uh, and it's uh, it, it's a very exhausting uh, uh, role, you know, for for the kid to play because he dies and, and he's tortured enormously. And we and I got friendly with him. He was a star in Hairspray, and here I am running around with him. And it's very tough to be friendly with somebody you just killed, you know, <laughs> in the movie. But the movie's it's a it's a great experience, a great experience. I really liked it. When's it coming out? Probably about a month. Oh. Be a month. They're gonna edit and take me out of it, probably. <laughs> you guys got the bus tour. We're gonna talk about that when we come back. All right, and play Sherry, the uh, from Jersey Babies, and we'll get that we'll get that thing on the air from Danielle Agadio. Be right back.